Rukhani at Yeshivat Maharat. She also serves on the faculty of the Shalom Hartman Institute of North America. Erin, where are you? Hi, I'm here. Great. Hi, this is so wonderful and exciting. Thank you so much for having me. It's really thrilling to see so many boxes of Zoomers. <laughs> um, okay, time is brief. So I just wanted to share with all of you a short reflection on the notion of tshuva, which is the theme of the moment. Um, tshuva is ordinarily identified as repentance or return and much of our liturgy pushes us in that direction. And we've spent hopefully a good deal of Elul thinking about our past years and committing and recommitting perhaps to um, changing behaviors. But that kind of orientation toward tshuva um, is one way of thinking about it. Um, and I'd like to suggest another to put in the back of your minds as we enter into this intensive um, engagement with Chuva itself. Um, and that is, and that is a, a perspective that emerges from the root of Chuva, which is uh, Lishev, or Lish, which is to sit. Um, there are a couple of Hasidic thinkers that actually make much of this, in particular, uh, Rabbi Nachman, and more, more recently, Rav Kook. Rav Kook writes about Chuva. He says, Kol chet humonea et yishuv hadaat hanidrash lehe'arat raze olam hatshuva hi potachat sha'arei bina keshem shehi ba'a al yedei habina. Or all sin prevents yishuv da'at. I'm going to pause there for a moment. The tshuva, they said, has the root in it for to sit, leshev. And it is these Hasidic thinkers who highlight that one kind of quote-unquote sin that we must contend with at this time of year is our lack of yishuv da'at, our lack of quiet mind or a settled spirit. And that perhaps the work of tshuva is about finding a way to quiet ourselves, finding a way to sit with all the storms that surround us, all the ruptures, all the fears, all the distractions, all the things that disquiet and uh, compromise our sense of equilibrium. And dare I say that these are times that unfortunately do just that, whether it is political for you, environmental or personal, religious, uh, whatever, whatever frame of reference works for you. Um, these seem to be times that are particularly disquieting and surface quite a bit of rupture. And so it seems to me that part of what these high holidays are about is actually learning somehow to find a way to sit in the midst of that, to find some kind of yishuv dat, a tshuva that leads to an internal peace, an internal kind of calm. And that is hard work. And hopefully some of the liturgy can help us get there. And hopefully some of the performances, particularly the shofar, can help us get there. And maybe the pauses in between can help us get there. And maybe a little bit of sitting quietly in meditation might help us get there. But it is all these tools together that I hope can maybe invite us away from exclusively the language of sin and punishment toward one from, I'd say, dis-ease to ease or chaos to calm. Um, because it seems that this season asks that of us too. So um, Rav Cook is one person who invites us there. And I mentioned before that Rabbi Nachman does the same. Um, I'm going to share with you just one small teaching that he has uh, regarding this shofar. He says... Um, I'll, I'll paraphrase. Uh, he says about the, the moans and the groans that are associated with the shofar, the ginuchei ganach v'yilulei yalil, that the, the Gemara identifies the, the sounds of the shofar as the sounds of tears. And he says that ze b'chinat ma sh'atzarich atah ha'adam behoveh kol yimei chayav l'hitkaber l'hafoch kol minei atzvut Dot, 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 dot. Sh'al yedei ze ikar hatshuva sh'ba al yedei yishuv hadat sh'hu al yedei simcha. 
He says, the, in the middle, we blow these sounds of the shofar, which represent the moans and the groans and the whimpers. And this is what a person must do all of their lives to strengthen and transform all kinds of cries and sadness into happiness. And he says, this actually is the essence of tshuva that comes through Yishuv Dad, this ability to find a way to overcome that which disrupts and disturbs and saddens and depresses. All of that, interestingly and importantly, is part of what it is to do tshuva. So I will leave you with that suggestion as we enter into this season in earnest, starting tomorrow night, um, that when we, when we beat our breasts, maybe we do that not only with a punitive uh, just not as a, only as a punitive gesture, but also as a way of sort of holding, holding our broken hearts maybe and trying to find a way back to our centers, back to our grounding so that we can experience not only tshuva you know, in a general sense, but yishuv da'at, the quieting or the calmness of the mind or spirit. Thank you. Shana tova. Erin, thank you so much. I, I know it was a pleasure to talk that through with you, and I feel like I got a lovely little snippet um, of your beautiful Torah that you teach and share, and it's really nice to kind of have that permission to create your own mental space on these days, not always stick to the text um, that's in front of us, and to really just do what we need to do personally on these days of reflection, and I really thank you for that. Thank you for that permission. Thank you, everybody. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.